Hello, and welcome to the AMDEC installation training session. My name is Marty McCartney, and I'm the training manager here at AMVIC. I have over 40 years of experience in the construction industry. In the last few decades, I've worked with the installation concrete form products. One of my goals is to try and shorten the learning curve of people working with insulated concrete forms in order to make their experience a much better one. Today, we'll be talking about many things. So I'll give you a bit of an overview. We will do an introduction of the AMDEC. We will cover tools, accessories and materials, the installation process, shoring requirements, reinforcement, penetrations through the AMDEC, concrete placement, exterior and interior finishing attachments, and we'll finish off with a technical resource overview. AMDEC is a stay-in-place form made from EPS foam. The concrete provides the structure, the insulation value comes from the EPS, and the forms allow you to attach finishes as well. The combination of all these gives AMDEC sound attenuation properties. What is AMDEC? AMDEC is a modular stay-in-place form designed to be used for floors and roofs. It uses type two expanded polystyrene foam. It can be used for both residential and commercial applications. Some of the most typical applications for AMDEC include floors, garage floors, sloped or flat roofs, green roofs. It is frequently used in areas of severe weather conditions, such as high winds and flooding areas. For high risk flood areas, it would typically be used on the first floor. And we'd also see AMDEC being used for safe rooms. Some of the AMDEC features. AMDEC has an R value of 19. It is specifically applicable to the Pro version. The parent's sound transmission class of 47 plus, which will roughly equate to an STC of 50. See our technical bulletin for more information on this. The foam density is 1.5 per cubic foot, and we have third party certification to qualify this. There are many benefits in using MDEC. Shoring supports can be placed farther apart, which reduces the number of supports needed. The units are modular and lightweight, which makes them easy to move around the job site. AMDEC can integrate various structural components. It can accommodate plumbing and HVAC and is ready for finish attachments. All these combined can reduce installation time, minimize waste, and ultimately decrease construction costs all the while providing great thermal and acoustic performances. AMDEC comes in two versions, the pro version on the left and the equal version you can see on the right hand side. The pro version comes in a single configuration while equal comes in several thicknesses. We have an eight inch, a 10 inch and a 12 inch thick product. As you can see from these pictures, AMDEC equal comes in eight foot lengths while the pro version is modular with integrated plastic webs as shown on the bottom left, which we'll touch on more later. Since AMDEC is essentially just a form for the concrete, the final result is similar regardless of which of these versions you're using. In this presentation, you will see AMVIC mostly used on the AMVIC ICF wall forms. The R22 and the R30 are both interchangeable. However, there is no reason it cannot be used with traditional poured concrete walls or reinforced CMU walls. The key point is to make sure the correct reinforcement is used. What you're seeing in this slide is a cross-section comparison of the AMDEC Pro and the Equal. The reinforcement in the slab and the concrete joist can change depending on the span. The key information here is the spacing of the metal joist and the wood joist. 16 inch for the metal ones and 12 inch for the wood joist. The concrete spacing is also different. 32 inches for the AMDEC Pro and 24 inches for the AMDEC Eco. You can also see that the AMDEC Eco is fully solid foam, while the ver Pro version is hollowed out. This is achieved with the inclusion of the web inside the foam. Another point to keep in mind is the need to tie back the wood joist into the concrete using the combination of screws and double washers. 
This ensures that the wood joists do not fall out after temporary shoring has been removed. This slide summarizes the key difference between the pro and eco systems. We already covered the size differences in the previous slides, including the joist spacing, the joist sizes, and the material differences. The R value of AMDEC Eco ranges between 16 and 17.5. The reason I'm saying roughly is that those values are simulated using an energy modeling software as opposed to laboratory tested values you would normally see in insulation. The R values represent the effective or actual R values, which include the drywall, the concrete topping, wood joists, and the air films. The nominal R value of AMDEC Eco just the foam essentially would be between 33.5 and 50, depending on the thickness. We have an online calculator for the pro and the ecosystem, which is available on our website. You can easily get it by clicking the quick guesstimator at the top right hand corner. Once you choose which AMDEC system you're using, you'll input the lengths, the widths of your building and or section of the floor and the concrete thickness and click calculate. The calculator will give you the number of panels needed as well as the concrete volume. All of our information in this we are covering today in this pro presentation is available in our installation manual for AMDEC Pro and Eco, which are on our website where you can view, download, or print it as needed. Let's dive into the tools and accessories materials. Basically on a job site, you'll need shoring bracing, some sort of saw to cut the foam, drills or drivers, spray foam to fill gaps and attach foam pieces together, protective gear for working with concrete, such as gloves, eye protection. These are common items that most contractors would already have. There are some nice things to have, such as a power actuated nailer, which is a ram set gun for putting shooting into the concrete. This type of nailer allows you to quickly attach the metal joists to the concrete wall. One of the most common tools that we highly recommended is a laser level. A lot of things are done with the lasers these days to make sure that everything is straight and flat, especially with a floor system. For materials, first and foremost is rebar. With all of its needed accessories such as ties and rebar chairs. You'll need screws for bracing, concrete screws, self-tapping metal screws if you're using the Pro system, or typical wood screws for the Eco version. You also need sleeves for anything mechanical or electrical that needs to go through the floor system, some sort of lumber, OSB or plywood for additional bracing or forming wherever it may be needed. If doing a concrete beam, for example, you, you will need plywood and reinforcement. AMDEC Pro end caps might be needed to make sure the concrete doesn't fall through the block or back in through the AMVIC cavity. What happens is at the end of the run, there's open, open voids and you just want to cover them off. Alternatively, you could use pieces of scrap foam or lumber cut to the right shape or size to block off these holes. For concrete pour, you'll need a vibrator, protective gear such as rubber gloves, boots, eye protection, hard hats, etc., etc concrete finishing tools, trowels, shovels. When it comes to working specifically with the foam, you'll need a hot knife or electric chainsaw for cutting, grooving, for electrical wiring, whatever you need to put in there, piping. Spray foam will be needed to fill any gaps or holes once the foam panels have been modified. And we'll dive into the installation process. Here we want to provide a short and basic guide to AMDEC installation. It may vary depending on your application, residential versus commercial, based on the spans, based on the site conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Once the concrete is poured into the ICF wall and had a chance to gain the appropriate strength, start by installing the wood or metal joists. Metal joists should be facing each other. This is applicable for the AMDEC Pro only. When the joists are secure, place one foam block at each end of the joists then lay the remaining blocks from one end, working towards the center, and then cut the center piece. Erect the shoring underneath to make sure that your 
going to hold that in place while you pour the concrete. If there's no ICF wall above the AM deck, provide the necessary forming around the perimeter. So there's an end beam being created to make sure that the concrete can't float over the top of that wall. Seal all seams between forms and all edges using spray foam. Install all the piping needed for the floor and floors above. Any sleeving for plumbing, services, and blockouts for mechanical will be installed now as well. Install all the rebar as per the structural design. This step is not applicable to all projects, but if you're going to put in-floor heating in, you've put down your wire mesh. You can zip tie the, uh, the piping to the wire mesh for your in-floor heating. So that before you pour, obviously, that's going to be part of the process. Pour the concrete into the forms. It's very important to use a mechanical vibrator to make sure that the concrete is properly consolidated. Trowel and finish off the concrete surface based on the project needs, whether you're going to use a bull float, bull float or whether you're going to use hand trowels or a power trowel, whatever you're going to end up needing. We get into some shoring requirements. It's important to remember that AMDEC is a reinforced concrete slab and needs to be treated as such. This means that it is absolutely must be supported properly. Although we provide design guides that tell what reinforcement is needed for various configurations, the final design for the reinforcement must be approved and stamped by an engineer. The same engineer will also provide information about the shoring details you need. For shorter spans, there isn't much difference between the pro and eco versions in terms of the wood metal joists and would come down to the shoring spacing requirements. AMDEC Eco would need to follow typical spacing of four feet, while AMDEC Pro can be supported roughly every 15 feet. This spacing can change based on what the structural engineer determines. For some longer spans, the wood joists might need to be done in two sections, since lumber is usually a max out at 16 feet in length, while the steel channels can come in much longer lengths. In a situation like this, the inside ends of the wood joists would have to, nothing to sit on. This is where the wood screws with washers come into play, as we show in the previous slide. These anchors will get embedded into the concrete and basically allow the wood joists to hang after the flooring has been removed and the concrete is cured. This is especially important for situations like the one you see here. If you're looking to use AMDEC to span, for example, 50 feet, then your AMDEC system would need to be double spanned. Double span AMDEC would require different reinforcement to that of a similar configuration, but only a single span. For an example, the reinforcement of a 24 foot single span and a 20 foot double span would be different. When doing a double span, a structural support in the center is needed, which would typically be either a steel beam or a concrete beam. The steel beam can be under the AMDEC system or inside the floor system. On the screen, you can see an example of a concrete beam. The left image shows the beam flush with the underside of the AMDEC system, while the one on the right protrudes from the bottom. The size and rebar configura configuration for the beams would be designed by your structural engineer. You would use traditional forming for these beams. So depending on your project, you may have a large opening or a different condition that requires AMDEC to not terminate at the wall as an edge beam is needed. Again, depending on your architectural or structural needs, the beam can be done either flush or protruding from the bottom. Regardless of the shape of the beam, the forming for it would be typical, something similar to what you see on the screen. Just to emphasize this again, AMBIC does provide a design guide for the reinforcement, which needs to be approved by an engineer. Things like shoring and beams would not be part of the design by guide, but would be done by the same engineer.
let's dive into a little bit of the reinforcement requirements. There are a few things to be aware of when looking for at the reinforcement needed. Dead loads, live loads, the self weight of the system, which includes the thickness of the slab, concrete joists, and the span. As we just mentioned a few slides ago, having a single or a double span will have an impact on the AMDEC reinforcement. The final design will be project specific and approved by an engineer who designed it. As I already mentioned, we do provide design guides for both the pro and the eco versions, and they're available on our website under the techno resources tab. The guides are a good starting point to check your span and see what rebar may be needed. This would be a good starting point for estimating and preliminary drawings. However, once a project reaches a more mature stage in the design, the structural engineer would review the proposed reinforcement and either approve it or make adjustments based on the site requirements. Although AMDEC might look complicated or intimidating at first, it is essentially a one-way slab. A one-way slab is very similar to a wood joist system where the load will transfer to the joist, which will carry the load then to the wall or a beam. This is exactly the same here with the main differences being the joists are concrete with different spacing. For comparison, a two-way slab is where the point load would transfer its load in both directions as opposed to the single direction of the one-way slab. A two-way slab would need to have support on all four sides, beams or walls, while one-way slab requires supports only on two of the sides perpendicular to the joists. The same goes for concrete joists. Although their cross-section is not a simple rectangle, when designing their reinforcement, their more complex cross-section is simplified to what you see on the right-hand side. This is basically a slab and a rectangular beam. This allows the designer to calculate things like shear strength, moment strength, positive or negative, short or long-term deflection, etc. The more complex joist cross-section would only play a role in determining the self-weight of the system and the rebar placement in terms of minimal concrete coverage. This is an example of what minimal versus significant reinforcement looks like. On the left, this type of reinforcement configuration could be used to span around 20 feet for typical floors in a house where you have bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchens, etc. On the right, you have a very substantial reinforcement that might be used with spans around 23 feet with two cars parked on top of it. Your typical double garage width is around 20 by 20. The key takeaway here is that you use the same AMDEC system with the same slab and the wood joists, but the reinforcement changes how and what configuration can be used. The AMDEC system, like any concrete slab, would need to be tied back to the wall. This is easily done by bending the ends of the rebar either up or down into the concrete core. When your slab portion has rebar, the bent dowels would match the spacing of the rebar. When using welded wire mesh, one would need bent L-shaped pieces of rebar to be placed along the perimeter of the AMDEC at intervals as specified by the engineer. There are multiple ways of connecting AMDEC to the wall, and each engineer will specify if they want all the rebar to be straight and then added L-shaped dowels, or whether they want spliced ends, or have the ends bent and by how much. The most important thing to remember is to make sure that you have rebar connecting the slab to the concrete wall core. The foam portion of AMDEC acts as a platform to work on and, a and formwork to hold the rebar and the concrete. The wood or metal joists are designed to support temporary construction loads. The joists typically rest on the concrete, requiring minimum four inches of bearing. For the metal joists, we recommend screwing them down using the concrete screws. Since a wood joist could be non-treated lumber, the ends need to be protected from the direct contact of the concrete. The wood ends can be wrapped in six mil poly or self-adhesive waterproofing membrane or self-adhesive flashing membrane, something that is water and vapor proof to make sure it doesn't rot over time. If you have attended our ICF training, you might have seen a similar slide to this one already. 
the principle of rebar splicing is the same. Two pieces of rebar should overlap by 40 times the diameter of the rebar. In using non-contact splice, you're limited to a maximum of six inches between the two pieces of rebar. Now we can cover off some penetrations through the concrete deck. If you've worked with ICF construction before, you know that you need to make sure you have sleeves and block off openings before placing concrete to make sure you don't end up having to drill the concrete later, which can be very expensive and time consuming. The principle applies here. Some pre-planning is required to make sure all the penetrations are in the correct location, the correct size, and you have enough of them to run whatever you will need to run once installing HVAC, plumbing, electrical, etc. These images show the ideal location for small penetrations through AMDEC. You can see that they fully clear the concrete joist, the metal or wood joist. This is what you should strive for. Here you see less than ideal locations, but still acceptable. You can place the sleeves right up against the concrete joist, as long as they don't interfere with the joist cross-sectional core by reducing its thickness or interfering with the rebar placement. The wood or metal joists can be cut substantially with a caveat that they would need additional support in these locations. This slide shows what not to do with penetrations. It is best to avoid these conditions. In theory, this can be done, but a structural engineer would need to approve or provide instruction for these specific locations. It should be easy to avoid these types of situations with small penetrations. This is not applicable to most single family residential homes and is targeted towards multi-unit residential and commercial construction. For those sectors, fire resistant assemblies are part of the code requirements and any penetration must be properly sealed. The main aspect of a fire stop detail is to ensure to have fire stop material. Many times it would be a sleeve of mineral wool insulation and a smoke seal at the top. This ensures that the entire assembly is rated for the particular fire resistant rating. Medium sized openings can be accommodated in between the metal joists only. Their width is limited to 14 inches for the AMDEC Pro and might require additional rebar around the opening depending on its size. AMDEC Eco allows for a 10 and a half inch wide opening between its joists. And again, it might require additional rebar around the opening depending on its size. Large openings such as stairs or mezzanines require structural support at the edge with beams, walls, columns. In this example, steel beams provide the edge support and they rest on a round HSS post. When looking to run plumbing or electrical horizontally, AMDEC Pro has openings that allow up to a three and a half inch diameter pipe to fit. The smaller openings in the form can be used for wiring. AMDEC Eco is solid and does not have the same kind of functionality and would require the pipes and or electricals to be partially buried in the foam or run fully underneath it. It is possible to cut some of the foam and partially embed plumbing pipes into it. This is especially true when trying to run something perpendicular to the wood joists. When running on the underside of AMDEC, it is important not to go deeper than two inches since that's when the concrete joists starts and it should not be compromised. The top of the AMDEC forms can be trimmed away with a hot knife to allow the pipes to be inset. The most ideal configuration for running utilities with AMDEC is to use bulkheads, or in the case of commercial and institutional construction, drop ceilings. This methodology allows the most flexibility in maintaining proper slopes for pipes, as well as their correct location in the floor above, without having the need to carve out foam, spray foam parts back in place, etc. Here we have a few examples of how some projects in the past have tackled how to deal with penetrations when using AMDEC system. It is important to go over the mechanical drawings and understand what is needed, where it's going, where it's coming from. This will allow the installer to implement it in the best way possible. 
When using AMDEC as a floor system, it is highly recommended to incorporate a small vertical shaft into the layout of the house to allow it to make it easy to run plumbing or HVAC. Now comes the fun part with the concrete placement. When it comes to concrete placement, the number one thing is safety. Follow safety precautions, wear your hard hat, protect your skin with gloves, long sleeves, long pants, protect your eyes with goggles, safety glasses. Double check your shoring, check that AMDEC is at the correct elevation and that all the rebar is in the correct place as per the design. Having a backup vibrator and enough room around the site is also very important on poor day. Another important point is to make sure that the pump truck is ready when the concrete arrives. The concrete used for AMDEC can be quite different depending on the specific needs of the project and what the engineer has specified. 24 MPA and 30 MPA are most common mixes. The slump should be bigger for flatter roofs and should be higher for slope roofs. A concrete boom truck is highly recommended with a minimum crew size of four. One person would be working the boom hose, one vibrating and two people leveling the surface. A few considerations to keep in mind. The surface should be clear and clean before starting the pour. The pour rate is not critical for AMDEC since you're working on a flat application, but this changes and does become more important as the slope becomes steeper. Concrete should be placed close to its final position and should not be spread with shovels and wheelbarrows. There should be no cold joints and the entire slab should be poured monolithically, unless of course, the engineer specifies otherwise. Avoid placing heavy equipment on the rebar. If you need to do so, placing wood planks to walk on distributes the weight. Shoring is removed after the concrete has gained its 28 day strength. Proper consolidation is key. Consolidation eliminates pockets, honeycombing and trapped air, allowing it to mold around the rebar and other embedded items. There are two types of consolidation methods, internal and external. There are systems on the market that basically look like plates that attach the to the exterior and use a specific frequency to vibrate the concrete. Stirring the concrete with a rod does not count as an internal vibration. Typically, a pencil vibrator is used and if building with ICF walls, you'd probably already have one on the job site. This is another example of a pencil vibrator. The key information you need to look for when purchasing one is the diameter of the head, frequency and radius of action, which will be explained in the next slide. As the concrete boom moves slowly, follow behind it with a pencil vibrator. You wanna make sure that you sink the head completely to the proper depth and hold it there for five to 15 seconds before lifting it up and out. Move and reinsert the vibrator at 1.5 times the radius of action. Take a look at the diagram to the right that really helps explain what that means. When you see that the surface becomes shiny, it's generally a good indicator that you can stop and move to the next section. Once a concrete pour is complete, you can finish the surface with a bull float. You can use hand trowels or a power trowel. These are the most common. Curing can be accomplished by using many different methods. It's expressed on this slide. You can spray a fine mist over it. You can cover with poly or cloth. You can use curing co compounds or evaporation retardants in the concrete. Finish attachments. Both AMDEC versions are essentially ready for finish attachments directly into the metal or wood joist, but there are other ways to attach drywall to the underside of AMDEC through the use of resilient channels, furring channels, bulkheads, suspended ceilings, or stucco. The top surface being plain concrete can accept almost any finish a typical concrete slab would take. Here you see a drywall directly attached to the underside of AMDEC Eco. Your typical drywall screws would work well on this application. We highly recommend using resilient channels with AMDEC Pro and Eco. This allows you to achieve a flat ceiling and it gives, plus it gives you the ability to run wiring if needed. And it is further improves the sound attenuation of the system. 
If you need more space between the drywall and the underside of AMDEC, you can use hat channels or even install steel framing. With AMDEC Pro, you can still apply drywall directly to the underside of into the steel channels, but you need to use self-tapping screws specifically designed for metal. Again, resilient channels, which are highly recommended, you use self-tapping screws to attach the resilient channels to the steel channels, then typical drywall screws secure the drywall to the resilient channels. Similar to AMDEC Eco, hat channels or steel framing to create a bigger cavity can be used if you need it. It is possible to finish the underside of AMDEC with stucco. This would be applicable when AMDEC is used above a garage, a utility space, a raised first floor, or a balcony situation. A metal mesh would be mechanically attached to the underside of the AMDEC into the plastic webs. And you'd follow the, followed by the base coat and then the finish coat. In some situations, the metal joists can be removed before the mesh in, is installed, but after the concrete has been gained its prescribed strength. In case some of you forgot what the web looked like inside the AMDEC Pro, here's a partial section. The web is designed to rest on the top of the steel channels to add rigidity and strength to the foam and provide a nailing surface at the bottom, which is where the metal screw and washer could be attached. Suspended ceilings are targeted more towards commercial applications, but there are many systems and many ways to install it. We primarily care about how the system connects to the AMDEC system itself. Depending on the length, the ceiling wire or rods can be embedded directly into the concrete joists as shown. They would need to be installed before the concrete is placed so it can be engulfed and thus making it rest securely inside the concrete. If you want to attach the ceiling wire to the concrete joists after they have been poured, which is quite common, you would need to remove small sections of foam depending on your spacing. Once the concrete is exposed, you would drill an appropriate width and depth hole where you can install either the expansion tie wire hanger or a spike wire hanger. If you want to use the metal joist, you can either use a self-drilling tie wire hanger anchor or a nut and bolt version. One thing to note with the nut and bolt version is that the small pieces of foam would need to be removed in order to gain access to the inner side of the steel channel. With AMDEC Eagle embedding the ceiling wire or rods, the same as with the Pro versions, they need to be installed before the concrete is placed. Once they are placed, the hole can be spray foamed to make sure everything is sealed properly before pour. Also, depending on the rebar configuration inside the concrete joist, the ceiling wire can hook over or be tied to the bottom rebar. Installing the tie wire hanger anchors after the concrete is in place is also done exactly the same as the Pro version. Remove foam, drill into the concrete, install the anchors. The suspended ceiling can be anchored to the wood joist as well, but requires use of an anchor which has the correct thread style and length for wood applications. The top of the AMDEC system is just a concrete slab and would be compatible with virtually anything that would normally be compatible with typical concrete slabs. When used for a car garage, we highly recommend applying concrete sealer. If looking to leave the concrete exposed indoors, similar to the architectural finish, a typical stain or sealer treatment can be easily done. Tile installation using th a thin set is installed the same way as any concrete floor system. For carpet installation, we recommend using an underlayment or pad for a better occupant comfort and improved acoustics. For solid wood, follow the manufacturer's specifications. This is typically a fully glued down application. For engineered hardwood, same thing, follow the manufacturer's install instructions. Double check if any underlayment is needed or can be installed to help reduce sound transmission from impact. This is typically also a fully glued down application. Typical installation of laminate flooring. This can be a floating or a glue down and it's recommended to be used with underlayment. In multiple unit residential construction, using an underlayment 
might be a requirement to reduce sound transmission to the unit below. Similar installation of laminate flooring. Some vinyl planks products come with cork backing, eliminating the need for underlayment. Now we get into the roof systems. So far, we've mostly seen AMDEC depicted in floor applications, but this product line is much more diverse than that. AMDEC can be used for roof applications as well, and that includes both flat and sloped roofs. When looking at a sloped roof application, there are a few things to keep in mind. For shallow slopes, a 5.5 slump is fine, but going to a 4 by 12 pitch the higher and higher slopes, you'd want to reduce the slump to 3 inch to ensure the concrete stays where you put it when you pour it. We generally don't see slopes exceeding 30 degrees with the AMDEC and would not recommend it going higher than that either. AMDEC can be configured in various roof types. The most common ones are gable, hip, single slope, shed style, Having said that, a cholesterol roof can be relatively easy to build as well. Butterfly roofs and attic style roofs are also possible. These diagrams show how AMDEC forms would be stacked in gable and hip roof configurations. The parts highlighted in red are the parts of the structure which will be supporting the loads from the roof. For the gable roof, the ridge beam at the top and the ICF walls perpendicular to the AMDEC concrete joists make for the roof load bearing components. For the hip roof, it's a bit more complicated. At the top, we still have a ridge beam with four hip beams connecting to it. In this configuration, the AMDEC concrete joists are equivalent to the jack and common rafters found on wood roofs. For hip roofs, the top portion of the entire ICF wall is often designed as one continuous edge beam to help take the load from the roof. This would be reflected in the rebar configuration at the top one or two courses of the wall. Working with single slopes is much easier. Both the shed style and cholesterol style roofs are quite popular for passive solar designs and can often be seen in high performance houses such as net zero and passive homes. The supporting of the roof is quite straightforward with the single slope and the cholesterol, the wall in the middle would need to be designed properly. Butterfly roofs are essentially the inverse of a gable roof with a ridge beam and two supporting sides. This style of roof is only recommended for the warmer and drier climates for the most part where you have very little precipitation. The easiest configuration for AMDEC is to build it flat like a floor and then add framed wood in whatever shape or style you need or want. This is probably the easiest and most simple build but would be the most expensive. When working with a sloped concrete roof, the soffit becomes an area that should be given some attention to ensure that it's detailed properly. In this slide, we're seeing a soffit condition where the AMDEC concrete joists are perpendicular to the wall. In the next slide, we'll show the condition when this is parallel. In a nutshell, there are three main configurations to work with. The left version shows just a thickened edge slab extending past the ICF wall, which is fairly easy to frame around. The right version shows a frame soffit, which is also straightforward. The middle condition where the AMDEC block forms part of the soffit is a little more complex and we will we'll provide an example in a few slides. In this slide, the soffit condition is for when the AMDEC concrete joists run parallel to the wall. All three conditions show this. You can see the slope by looking at the shadows on the walls. The left version shows a thickened edge extending out, similar to what you have seen in the previous slide. This type of configuration is limited in length. On the right, you have a framed soffit, which is also limited in protrusion length. The middle condition is the most complex. As you've seen in all the slides up until this point, AMDEC generally runs in a single direction. 
you can have multiple spaces or spans, but with within each span or space, AMVIC will run in a single direction. In situations where you would want to have a bigger overhang, the AMVIC system would need to be stopped short of the wall. It would be a beam, concrete or metal, and then AMVIC will span from that beam to the wall perpendicular to the rest of the system. Here we have an example of a finished soffit where AMDEC is protruding past the wall. There are multiple ways of finishing the soffit with AMDEC, and this is only one. But it is important to detail this condition properly and not leave it to the contractor to figure out on site. In this particular rendering, there's additional insulation attached to the bottom of AMDEC, which makes this a cold roof, but you would easily add rigid foam insulation above the concrete as well. When using AMDEC in a slope roof configuration, you're essentially creating a cathedral style roof and it is highly recommended to make sure you have venting capacities within the roof assembly. The air cavity helps cool the roof, which is beneficial in all climate zones. Flat roofs are much simpler to erect, but they still require a degree of knowledge to make sure that they're done properly. This would be applicable to both residential and commercial construction. The slump for flat roofs would be around 5.5, similar to floors. Flat roofs are actually low slope roofs and do require a minimum slope of 2% and generally up to about seven degrees. After that, they would be into the slope roof category. The slope can be achieved by sloping the concrete with a concrete topping. In some instances, the rigid insulation is sloped or the entire AMDEC system can be sloped, but that might be a little more difficult. Since AMDEC creates a concrete surface above it, virtually any configuration of flat roof can be done. Conventional or inverted membrane can be done. The membrane can be adhered, ballasted, or mechanically fastened. All the common roof membranes would be compatible as well, regardless if they are single or multiple ply. If you're looking to overhang or create a soffit with your flat roof AMDEC system, the methodology is very similar to what we have seen in the slope roof soffits. The left condition shows the overhang framed with AMDEC, and this would also be applicable to balconies. The middle condition shows the thickened slab protruding outward. This would be limited in length. On the right side, there is no overhang with the concrete or the AMDEC with the concrete. This type of condition can be done to achieve a no parapet look that might be needed for a particular design. Alternatively, a soffit can be framed and hung from the wall, which will act as an overhang. Depending on the size and exact configuration, the framing can either be attached to the ICF webs or to the outer ICF panel and can be stopped short. The framing can be attached directly to the concrete also. In most cases with flat roofs, we see parapets, tall or short, and everything in between. The main takeaway points from this render are the following. Additional insulation can be added below the AMDEC system. This will make for a cold roof and would probably be more common in residential construction. In commercial construction, adding rigid foam above the AMDEC system is more common. The foam will create a sandwich-like system, very similar to ICF, and oftentimes the foam is used to create the slope for the drainage as well. When using an ICF parapet, we recommend covering the top of the parapet with rigid foam. This helps ensure the thermal envelope continuity and separates the wood trim from the concrete. Covering the foam with a sheeting board is important, especially when dealing with roof membranes that need heat, such as a BUR roof, or even single ply roofs with welded seams. But we highly recommend it working with a roofing consultant to figure out the best configuration for your specific project. To close off on this, all the typical flashing, counter flashing, overlapping principles that are needed for a typical flat roof would apply here as well. All the information we covered today and more is available on our website. If you need to find your local territory manager and how to get in touch with them, click on where to buy tab on the top right hand corner highlighted in blue. You can find this and other full-length training sessions under the training tab on the secondary navigation menu highlighted in green. If you want to watch a particular section 
of this webinar or any of our other training webinars, you can find them on our YouTube page, organized in their perspective playlists. The full-length versions of the webinars are available as well. The technical resources page can be easily assessed from the main navigation menu highlighted in yellow. Our technical resources page is broken down into categories with all product lines under each category to help you easily find what you're looking for. For AMDEC, we have data sheets, installation manuals, design guides, product drawings, construction details, 3D models, BIM and technical bulletins. If you're unable to find the information you're looking for, feel free to reach out to us by clicking on the Contact Us tab at the top right hand corner of the web page. Thank you everyone for attending and always know that the AMVIC team is here to help support your build.